Uh, if you sell life insurance in 2024, 2025, or plan on being a part of the industry here now and in the future, Mutual of Omaha will become one of, if not your favorite carriers you get to work with. Grady Paulson here, the America Agency. Beyond excited to have Dylan Cummings from Mutual of Omaha on with us. Uh, if you sell life insurance in 2024, 2025, or plan on being a part of the industry here now and in the future, Mutual of Omaha will become one of, if not your favorite carriers you get to work with. Um, not just because of Dylan, but because the products, the company, the naming, the branding, they were on a TV show in the 60s that people still talk about. And, uh, and it, what's exciting about it is that they are a... Uh, from a price standpoint, from a quality standpoint, from a customer support standpoint, they just do it all right. So a lot of you guys are new agents, people watching this video, maybe you're new agents getting started with us. You're going to love working with Mutual of Omaha. You're going to love their compensation structure. You're going to love how their clients get taken care of. And you're going to love the accessibility of different products that they have. So um, had a lot of fun over my career being involved in working with Mutual and excited for all of you guys to learn more about it and to learn from Dylan as well. So without further ado, the head sales trainer, the head support for Family First Life and the man of the hour, Mr. Dylan Cummings. How are you doing today, brother? I'm doing so well. How are you? I'm excellent, man. Excellent. Excited to have you on. Excited to see you here in a few weeks. Excited to see you in 10 weeks because we'll, we'll be at our convention together and um, excited for people to learn more about Mutual of Omaha. It is truly uh, one of the I don't even want to say staple. It's like one of the the three pillars, and I don't even know what the other two are. But it is it, you will fall down if you do not have Mutual of Omaha in your bag, and <laughs> you'll you'll be able to get up and crawl. You know, people you know just army crawling through the mud. But if you've got Mutual now, you're sprinting. And I so I truly believe um, every single agent that I work with, I require them to get a health license because I believe that Guaranteed Advantage Accidental product is so crucial to have as a an add-on, a pivot, or a downsell option when dealing with clients who maybe are budget concerned but are just looking for something to protect against what's most common. And you guys, no one does that product. Most, no one does that product really, but no one has, who's ever tried to do it does it as good as you guys do. And it is just a phenomenal, my, my first year in the industry, my income grew 25% with that singular product alone. Wow. And uh, I'm just so grateful that you have it, you keep it going. And, and, um, and, and, and I'm going to slow down, but pass it over to you. But I'm excited to have you on today, brother. All right. I, thank you so much. I'm, I'm going to try and match your energy level, but it's still probably going to be like one step under. So everybody on the call, forgive me. I, uh, uh, something to aspire to for me. I do have a slide deck that I'd like to go through if that's cool. Oh, look at that. That's perfect. Oh, yeah. We're up and running. All right. Grady, thank you so much for having me on the call. Uh, I feel like this has been a, a long time coming. I, I, uh, I love the way that you do everything um, for everybody that's on the call listening to this. Uh, uh, this is very well done. So um, not, not everybody's doing things this well. So uh, keep it up. I'm absolutely thrilled to be on the call with you guys. Some things I want to just kind of set the table on what we're going to talk about here at Mutual, just like Grady mentioned, I've got so many different products that I can talk about that it, it's, all, it's a good problem to have from my perspective. So we're going to really just kind of focus on what makes Mutual of Omaha special, what sets us apart. And uh, for, for the majority of it, really, I just want to focus in on a few key concepts of IUL, specifically what makes Mutual of Omaha's IUL so compelling. And, and really, I think once I can get everybody to have their arms around a few concepts, you're really going to have a, a better understanding of, of what makes an IUL special and, and what you need to be doing and thinking about when you're reviewing different companies with IUL. Up front, there's, there's not just one sales director that you have access to at Mutual of Omaha. You, you now have two. So I have been working with the FFL account for uh, the better part of four years now. And after about two or three years of, of kind of doing it solo, I was a lone wolf. It, it was determined that I, I did need an extra set of hands to help uh, you know support you guys, right? There's there's so much FFL, you guys have grown and grown and grown. So it's it's a uh, it's been an absolute fantastic basically year now that we we took on a, and hired Heather Larue. So Heather is a, a fantastic resource for you guys to reach out to. So if uh, uh, just making sure that you guys both know that we're, we we both are solely dedicated to family first life. So there, there's. No other accounts that we really have to mess around with besides you guys. You you guys are our, our, our morning, afternoon, and evening every every day, all day. So we're, we're here for you. Um, if, if there's uh, smaller agency managers that uh, you know need more fine tuned training or anything like that, she's a great person to reach out to for that. If you guys are doing lock ins or anything like that, uh, we're both uh, you know at lock ins week to week pretty pretty regularly. So we're we're here for you. Uh, we we want to be able to support you. So if uh, if 
if having presence of Mutual of Omaha is something anybody needs, please please let us know because we're we're absolutely uh, wanting to do that. So why do business with us? This is where we're going to talk about Mutual of Omaha. Number one thing here that we always go over is we have really really strong. Um, you know, we'll talk about brand in a moment, but our, our, our ratings and our financial security is something that we, we focus on regularly. It's something we spend a lot of time and effort internally to make sure that we're doing everything right, because we, we really do want to make sure that we're a company that's you know not only been around since 1909, but is going to persist for another century, two centuries, three centuries, whatever the case may be. We really want to focus on longevity with everything we do. So we have very good high ratings across the board, AM Best, Moody's, S&P. Uh, you know, every time yeah, you know, these guys come in and, and audit our books on a pretty regular basis to make sure that everything we're doing, the financial decisions we're making, are things that are really going to protect our customers into the future, right? One thing to note about us is we, we are, in fact, a mutual company. So if you're not sure what that means, it's basically we're, we're owned by our policyholders, which is a really nice thing to be when we're not having to answer to stockholders quarter after quarter to turn a big profit quarter after quarter and 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 being pushed to make these really aggressive financial plays there might be a little bit risky but give that stockholder a a, a bump uh, from, from month to month with not having to focus on anything like that we can set really long-term financial goals for for how we want to do things in the future and and even if we're not making necessarily a, a a killer profit on one thing if we feel like it, it protects our interests the way it should if it protects who we're who we're owned by and who who are you know what we're in business for which is our policyholders um it makes a lot of sense that way so we've really weathered the kind of last 30 years of financial term turmoil between the you know the markets and then the different crises that we we've, we've been uh the, presented with as as a, as a population here and uh you know we, we've been affected by a lot of that stuff pretty minimally because we we can have kind of conservative measured uh financial outlooks that have, have really protected us through through some of the the the, the, the lowest lows and, and and all those things that have kind of impacted our lives over the last few decades so uh, that that's very important to me that and then and knowing that you have a company like this that's focused that way in the mutual way yeah i mean you really can have peace of mind when, when you're selling something to your clients so always keep that in mind you know we, we really are focused on making sure that we're financially secure pretty much forever uh, uh and so you, you might run into some things where people say that we're a little bit conservative but that that is kind of our outlet we are kind of a, a conservative midwest mutual company that that's the the flavor that we intend to give off uh, the, so Grady mentioned this before already, but Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. I mean, you know, we talk about branding all the time at Mutual of Omaha, but I mean, really just, just dwell on this for a minute. He, he, he mentioned that this was a television show that was on in, in, I think it started like 1963, 1964, was on every single Sunday night from the sixties to the eighties. So for four decades, Sunday after Sunday, after Sunday, People watch Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom show. It was on right before the Disney hour. Uh, so it was really uh, having such a, a, a huge market share that people saw that television show year after year. And I mean, you got to think in the 60s and 70s, there, there wasn't a ton of programming options, right? You, you maybe had three networks to choose from. And so Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom really was a thing through the 60s, 70s, and 80s where people were uh, you know, seeing this, this television show and, and really gaining an, a positive association with that name, Mutual of Omaha. So, so when Mutual of Omaha talks about brand and, and why so many people know that name and are willing to crawl on their hands and knees across the desert to get to, to get at that name and, and have use of that, uh, that's the reason why. That's the biggest thing. We're also kind of retooling Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom now. So probably a lot of folks on this call aren't necessarily... Uh, watching Saturday morning cartoons, but it's back, right? So on uh, on NBC, I think uh, uh, like the 10 a.m. Central Time, something around there, we're actually showing Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom new uh, new uh, episodes that we're we're creating and producing uh, the, you know, in in the real time now. So we're we're focused on making sure that, that brand name persists, and and that's something that goes on for years and years and years, and that way we're able to to stay top of mind for your clients any any time that you're talking to them about Mutual of Omaha. But again, for for that older you know, kind of an issue age demographic, 45 and older, people are going to have a very, very, uh, you know, uh, positive association with that Mutual of Omaha brand name. So, so keep that in mind. Use that. That's 100% every client you talk to. If you're, if you're talking to somebody on the phone for the first time, you know, use that that Mutual of Omaha name to sort of, you know, gain that, that, 
that uh, rapport with them right away because it, it is something that people do have a, a positive and, and kind of a, an affectionate uh, memory of. I did want to throw in some blocking and tackling things here just to make sure that you guys have information uh, resources from us, uh, other things that can help out. So I've got the sales support phone number here. Take a picture of this with your phone, underwriting phone number here. Take a picture with your phone, customer service. Uh, I, I am very proud of our, our sales support, underwriting and customer service teams. I think they they do a really good job. I get a lot of compliments from agents uh, it, it, that, you know, people go the extra mile to try and help folks. Um, that said, you know, you know, anybody can have a bad day, but uh, uh, if you do ever run into anybody that's uh, a bit salty on the phone or anything like that, that's a great time to get me involved. I, I love to get uh, involved with people like that to make sure that, hey, you know, let, let's just make sure that, uh, you know, this agent was having a hard time and, and we need to do everything we can to help the agents. Because in, in my mind, every single application that you guys submit, you know, from from the, the start of the sales process where you purchased a lead, you got somebody on the phone and that person gave you 25 minutes to educate them about life insurance. And then you actually had an application come through where you got their all their personal information and set it through. Good grief. That is a miracle to me. So every single application is a sweet little baby miracle. And I 100 percent want to make sure that every sweet little baby miracle that you send a mutual of Omaha has a has a positive experience for you guys. So. Let me know if those folks aren't working out for you, but uh, I generally do hear really, really good things about all the different supporting folks that we have here at Mutual. Some other resources that I wanna make sure that you guys are aware of. Uh, SPA is what we uh, affectionately refer to at our, our, our uh, kind of agent portal. Sales professional access is what that stands for. Uh, but anytime you're accessing you know, Mutual of Omaha case monitoring or your, your, your commission statements and, and anything along those lines, that's all out on our, our sales professional access. We have a nice little training thing that we've set up and, and Heather and I have been involved in kind of setting up videos and adding resources to, and that's our FFL agent accelerator platform. So, so take a picture of that QR code and that should take you right to that that website kind of you can scroll up and down there there's a lot of really good information that we're we're kind of fine-tuning as people ask us for things that like hey wouldn't it be great if mutual of omaha had a i would say a, a training video on our electronic application this can take you to that so you've got training videos uh you've got product information it does a really good job of kind of picking up some of the slack that some of our other i think training resources haven't necessarily quite gotten to yet so uh, things that we can update pretty easily. So if you guys ever have suggestions on things that you want to see out there or, or that your agents are asking for, or they're thirsty for, let us know. We, we can get you that information. A couple other great websites to look at that we're, we're uh, kind of uh, retooling right now, but I think that you know within a couple of months, we should have some uh, the kind of final forms of these, but mutualofomaha.com backslash simple is dedicated to all of our simplified issue express issue products. So that's IUL Express, Term Life Express, Live and Promise Final Expense, uh, Guaranteed Advantage Accidental Death, uh, our Critical Illness, our uh, Critical Advantage uh, Portfolio. Um, so anytime you have any questions product-wise on any of those uh, the, the specific individual products, that's a great website to go out there and grab that information. I promise like 90% of the questions that you have on a product, you can probably find on that mutualofomaha.com backslash simple. And then this is kind of a newer one that I'm introducing to the folks, and it's uh, discoveriul.com. It's supposed to be kind of our IUL university or, or IUL 101, depending on how you want to look at it. So if, if you're new to IUL or you've got agents that are new to IUL, it's a great way to kind of go through and just pull some concepts. And it's actually got a glossary of terms. So if you're, you're ever curious about, oh, what does is, what is annual point to point mean? Or, or you know, what's a segment? What's a crediting strategy? It actually has all those things laid out and defined for you in a really simple way that I think is easy to digest, especially if you're new to the industry. It's got some videos out there that kind of walk through the, you know, the simple bare bones concepts of what IUL is. Eventually, I think what most folks come to understand is that IUL is, is actually a pretty simple product. Um, but, you know, it, you know, if you twist it this way and twist it one way and then twist it a third time, you're, you're going to get some more complicated strategies that, that can be done inside of IUL, but not necessarily every IUL needs to be that complicated. So they are pretty simple products on the face of it. And I think that gives a lot of great information to, to kind of uh, help you guys understand what, what, what it all means to be for IUL. Just worth again mentioning our, our very robust simplified issue product portfolio that we have uh, available to you guys. I think I, I touched on all these products before, but 
you know, everything we're going to talk about today is going to be IUL focused, but I still do have a very, very competitive express issue term. Uh, our final expense living promise, um, still one of the, 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 you know, top price products that are out there. And, and we've done focus groups and things with, with that living promise, final expense products and some of our other products. And when folks are positioned with a, a product that, you know, it, let's say that the, the living promise might be a dollar or two more expensive than, than a, you know, the kind of the, the generic, whatever product final expense that somebody else is presented with, they choose the mutual of Omaha product because they know and like that brand, right? Like knowing that that brand name is there gives them a certain amount of trust. So, you know, I, I always, again, tell people to lean into that brand when you're talking to folks, especially, you know, final expense is one of those, those, uh, uh, specific products where I think it just it just pays so many dividends to have that product it makes it harder to replace because even if somebody can come behind that that living promise product for you know something that might be a buck cheaper or something like that they, they can still feel protected because you know nobody's gonna be able to pull that that mutual of Omaha policy out of their hands so that's that's a you know again a really really strong way to promote that product to make sure people understand uh, children's whole life you know this is a product that I, I feel like I don't do a, a good enough job of promoting but it is such a simple add-on product to any other product that you have. Um, and, and final expense is, is a really good one to, to talk about because not only can parents sign that policy for kids, but grandparents can sign that policy without the parents being involved on all of their grandchildren. So anytime you're selling a final expense, you know, even if it's not mutual of Omaha, there, there's no reason you shouldn't be asking them about, hey, are your grandkids covered? Because I guarantee every single grandparent loves their little grandbabies to death. And, and they're going to be happy to take out this, this children's whole life type product. Very inexpensive premiums, very affordable. Uh, that guaranteed advantage product, that's the, the, the one that Grady mentioned at the top. Jump into that. The children's whole life is so powerful, guys, is because, and Dylan, please correct me if, if things have changed, but as a grandparent can buy it on a child without the parent's consent, which is, you know, it's just, it's a gift from the grandparents. Let's not make it weird. But it's, you can go up to 50,000 of whole life coverage on a two year old. Right. Right. And then at any at five, um, what are they called? Five Tates, five uh, life Three events. Life events is what we call it. Yeah. 30, 35 married by first home or have their first child. They can increase the coverage based on the original face amount. So hypothetically, and we're not we're just talking about life. Right. We deal with life insurance and actual science. Child gets sick. He gets child gets leukemia. Child gets some sort of ish disease, some some sad thing overcomes it and they continue on live a wonderful healthy life the problem is though that is now on their mib report for the rest of time right and that would be a preclusion most often from probably most terms in some whole lives or at their you know until they're probably 40 or 50 years old so the fact that they can get a gift from a grandparents grandparent that can and we're all life insurance believers, right? We sell it, we own it, we believe in it, we understand the value of it, we understand that we're you know prepaying for you know for something that's going to happen, and we want to make sure that we're passing on some uh, a, a financial gift to our family. But you know you, you don't think about that stuff as a, uh, thinking about a two year old or my four year old daughter, right? I'm not thinking about that stuff. But good plan, you know, no one plans to fail; they fail to plan. And this sort of simple product that you that a grandparent or a parent could put on their child. It then sets them up at a very nominal low price point. We're talking like some are seven bucks, 10 bucks, 12 bucks, you know, $14, put right. all three kids on, you know, it's, what is that? 28, 42 bucks. It's not going to, you're not going to pay, put get, you're not going to, um, you know, buy a new house on these sales, but as Limer states, the more apps in a home, the more likely the client is to stick with you for life and never answer another life insurance leader, talk to another agent. So it's a very simple add on, but it's also a, a huge benefit for the child to have this policy that then gives them access to future availability for life insurance in the future, regardless, some, and, and if nothing happens, and if they don't get sick, got, great. Well, at these, at these marker points in their life, they can increase their face amount. And, uh, and it's just a great, great product. So just wanted to throw my other two bits in. How 100%. Like, yeah, I mean, that, I, I have a, 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 well, I would say all the time I have people that come to me like, hey, do you have a, you know, I've got a guy who, who has a family and, and works hard, but like I can't find what basically he'll only qualify for a final expense and, he, and, he, and he's 30 years old, right? Or 35 years old. You know, how many people have had that that client come to them that fall in that category? And the reason is because they, they had some something happen to them when they were younger that, that makes it really hard for them to get real life insurance. So this protects that exact situation to make sure that they're, they're covered for a good chunk of life insurance. 
uh, even if something does come up in, in, in their lives in the, in the meantime. So I, I'm with you. I think it's one of the, the most impressive, cool things that you can do for, for folks. Uh, that, that guaranteed advantage product, the only true guaranteed issue product that I have available on the brokerage market is this guaranteed advantage accidental death coverage. So only covers in the event that your client dies due to an accident, but it is truly a guaranteed issue product. I don't ask anything about health. I don't ask anything about occupation. Uh, as long as they can, uh, you know, pay that premium uh, up, up front, make that that immediate premium payment, they're gonna qualify qualify for the product. So um, that's a really really great product to have in your tool bag. Great way to supplement life insurance. Uh, great way to, you know, again add add that extra sale to make sure that that makes it that much stickier inside the home because they've got now they've got a term policy with you, an accidental death, and then they covered their three kids with with children's whole life. So you know, having that whole thing bundled together uh, really you know, strengthens that sale to make sure that those are going to be sticky policies. And then the critical advantage portfolio, we are seeing this, this portfolio take off, especially over the last year where uh, FFL, again, has become the, the premier uh, marketing organization to kind of see the value of something and, and, and really just explode it. So this is a, a lump sum critical illness program. So you guys are all familiar with, you know, critical illness living benefits. Uh, but those are kind of ill-defined because anytime you're using or re you know relying or talking to clients about those living benefits inside of a life insurance policy, the actual amount of money they're going to get in that is is going to be entirely dependent on what their life expectancy is, right? And and sometimes that life expectancy charge that the, all the, the 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 life insurance carriers are making can can be a little bit unexpected. It might it might take more out of that benefit than what clients actually were anticipating. This is a you know exactly what you're going to get because it's a lump sum based on the app, on the diagnosis. So if I get cancer and I have a $25,000 critical advantage policy, I know I'm going to get exactly $25,000. That's I know precisely the amount that I get out for the precise condition that's involved with that. So lots of great products to talk about. And then I'm going to spend the rest of the time kind of going into to, uh, a couple of things on our IUL. Um, IUL, gosh, I mean, you guys are, basically becoming an IUL company to, to a large extent, right? Uh, you know, uh, FFL is going to do, you know, uh, you know, roughly $50 million with us in IUL this year, which is just, that's a huge amount of money that the, the amount of sales that is compared to anything we've done with, you know, anybody else in the, in the last five years is nobody even comes close. Uh, and, and I imagine you're going to do, you know, more in IULs with other carriers as well. And so it just, you know, if you add that all together, you guys are one of the biggest IUL sales organizations that there are, right? So and I think that's fantastic. I think that's amazing. You guys really recognize the uh, importance and, and kind of the Swiss army knife approach that, that an IUL can provide. But, you know, with that, with that great power, also in my mind comes great responsibility. So as you guys get, get better at IUL and, and start to, you know, review the landscape of IUL, you, you've got options that are available to you. And I want to impress upon you why I think our IUL is is oh I, you know obviously I'm biased but I, I think it is it is the most honest straightforward um, easy to understand IUL for your clients and actually provides the biggest safety net for your clients as well which is what people really are expecting out of a life insurance policy. So real quick we're just going to talk about what an IUL is because this is going to be germane to the the stuff that I talk about later in, in the next couple of slides. But when you pay a premium into an IUL there's two things that happen with that money, right? So if you're, if you're paying me a hundred bucks, I'm going to take 50 of those dollars and, and I'm going to keep that for the insurance carrier. That's cost of insurance, that's fees and charges and all the other things that I keep. That is just the, the mere cost of what it takes for the life insurance, the death benefit that you're getting. So if you paid a hundred dollar premium, I took 50 and then I applied it to that. The other 50 goes into the accumulation value. So you've probably seen similar presentations where people have you know, buckets or something like that. These are the two buckets. One goes to the insurance carrier. The other goes to the savings accumulation part of it. And that's it. It's pretty simple. And then what you can do with those savings is maybe where that things get a little bit more complicated. And, and in my mind, like keeping that part of it as simple as possible, I think is actually a benefit to the client in many ways. So if you go down through that arrow, after you put that, that money in that accumulation bucket, you've got some options of what you can do with that. Um, everybody generally has like a fixed account, which nobody's going to do because it's going to not get any upside potential compared to what it can do in a market. And then you've got some indexed opportunities that are available with us specifically as well. Uh, most of the things that we're doing are S&P 500 based. 
I also have an agility index. I'm not going to talk too much about it other than know that the idea that agility index is to more or less hone in about a 5% return on a, on that that accumulation part. So not going to be the highest highs, but it tries to avoid the lowest lows in, in a little bit different way than, than maybe just putting something in the S&P 500 would. So other ways uh, uh, or you know, moving forward on, on how an IUL works so that you've got the cost of insurance that increases as your client gets older. So, you know, every year that cost of insurance goes up inside of that policy uh, to the point where at some point the client's premium no longer covers that, that cost of insurance. Uh, and that's when you're going to start to rely on the accumulation value to, to offset some of those higher charges within that policy later in life. Right. So that keeps that premium of affordable throughout the client's lifetime. And this says this is how IUL express policy works, but virtually this is how every IUL in the industry works. We're, we're all playing off the same skeleton infrastructure of IUL the same way. So pretty simple. You pay that premium. You hope that accumulation offsets the, the, uh, the higher uh, policy charges later in that policy life. Um, so you really want to make sure that you're doing everything you can to, to you know, one, keep the cost of insurance charges low and, and protect the upside potential the best way that you know how. So this is a little uh, uh, mock-up that we've done. Uh, apparently, the the animation didn't work in this because that I express as the policy sell for your mom was supposed to come up afterwards. But we'll we'll pivot and, and just go with it. <laughs> pretend like pretend like you don't see that. But I've got a comparison here with our IUL Express product next to a competitive simplified issue IUL product. So the thing that I want to have you focus in here is is how much of that premium is getting exposed to the accumulation bucket side of things, right? So I've got a few different age groups here to, to, to review. And what we're saying is that, hey, after 20 years, how much premium on our easy solve would the client have paid it in that policy? How much would they have paid of that competitor part, uh, competitor product at, at their you know, version of easy solve, target premium, whatever the case may be? How much in charges and fees are they charging against that premium payment and then how much of that premium payment is actually going to be applied to the accumulation value. So that's, wow. that's, that's the layout of what we're, we're looking at here in these different columns. So if you look at age, age 30 over 20 years, yeah, that that's clients going to pay, uh, or, you know, in, in this comparison, uh, you know, $5,000 more over 20 years, right? Like, so, you know, the, the, uh, the, the, the layman would look at this and go, well, that competitor product is better. Sure. But the charges, the things that that carrier is keeping to themselves and not exposing to that market is actually a thousand dollars more than what we're charging in fees based on that same same uh, same outlook when, when we're making that that original you know kind of a premium quote for the product. So 51 percent of that premium is going to be applied to that age 30 on, in, in the 20 year, whereas I think it's it's less than 30 in, in the competitor product. So we're, we're, we're a big difference and how much of that accumulation value is going to actually be exposed to the market. And so then if you go on into 40 years, it's actually negative 10% of the premium is going to be is going to be afforded to that accumulation value at that stage. So they are totally banking on having way more upside potential in the market over that 40 year period than where they're, they're basically not putting any premiums to that. It's only the accumulation that's going to be able to sustain whatever value that they have in that product. That's really dangerous in my mind, right? That that is not something that I would necessarily write for my mom, right? Like so, the the kind of the, the wisdom here that I'm, I'm trying to portray is that IUL Express it is the policy that you would sell your mom, right? Because that that yeah. is too risky of a product for for anyone to do that that doesn't quite understand the concept. They're they're going to essentially underpay on that product. It's going to be in my mind an underfunded product uh, in comparison to, to to what we're doing. So. That for me is a little bit too unpredictable for what I want out of a life insurance product. So I, that is kind of the thing that I need to have you guys hone in and think about. This is not anything that you're going to see in an illustration where, you know, if if somebody compares things like that, the, the illustration isn't going to tell this story. You're going to need to know this story and understand it in order to make sure that you can tell this to the client as well. Right. So, um, you know, I have folks who say, hey. I wrote an IUL Express and I have a competitor who, you know, that, or somebody that came in and talked about this competitor product. You know, I, you might need to talk to them about both products when, when you're coming into that, right? Like, hey, there's another product out there. I don't think it performs as well because of X, Y, Z. You need to be able to explain this and say, hey, it looks like it's quoted 
less for the same amount of, of death benefit, but in actuality, it's actually going to put you in a riskier position. And I don't want to do that. Um, so this is a great illustration to kind of, you know, help share. And I can, you know, th this slide's available on the, uh, the discoveriul.com website. So, you know, we're making that information available to you guys. Uh, you know, we've got the same kind of comparisons on our fully underwritten IUL products as well as I, as I, those have certainly taken off with, uh, with, with the, uh, with you guys over the last year too. Um, so it, it, it's, it's the same story for, for all the different products that we have available. So I do just want to go over kind of like what makes that that IUL uh, story and, and why that that cost of insurance beyond that that cost of insurance again is applicable to all the different IUL products that we have. Uh, but in the sim simplicity category, we're we're doing the same thing. Everything is very straightforward. Um, we do an annual point to point crediting method on every single thing that we do. So you know we're not slicing things up a, a hundred different ways. And honestly, generally the more different ways that that other carriers have like the, the the different crediting strategies set up that that honestly that's what adds to those those fees and charges that they have because the, the more options that they have the, the more they have to pay to keep those options with with the whatever financial institutions they're doing for their for their options budget uh, we've got four index crediting strategies so very simple 99 percent of the crediting strategies that we get is the 100 percent participation on on the s p 500 so pretty standard. If you're running easy solve on IUL Express, that's what you're going to get automatically. Uh, and so we've seen very good uh, history out of that over the last four years that we've had that product available to you. But it's worth pointing out that we do have some other strategies available to you. We've got the higher participation, lower cap, um, where you're getting more upside potential, but your, your cap is much lower. And then we also have, interestingly, a low participation, no cap, where if, if you were to look at the the history over the last five years of, of which of these participation strategies worked the best, that's actually the one that's performed the best over, over the last four or five years. Now, past experience is not a predictor of what the future will hold. So, so keep that in mind. Uh, for me, again, that 100% participation makes a lot of sense. I think uh, most folks are very comfortable and understand that. And so I, I generally would just stick with that 100% participation on the product. Um, very, very flexible. Uh, as far as what you can do with all of our IUL products. So IUL Express is a simplified issue product, but it, it is a true IUL product. You can go out to our WinFlex, you can max fund it, you can short pay it, you can do all sorts of things that you wouldn't be able to do with uh, with, with some of the other IUL products that are out there. Uh, it's guaranteed for at least 20 years or to age 80, no matter what, even if you're paying the minimum premium. Uh, it, it is in most, most cases designed to, to last until age 120. So I get a lot of people that ask me about that easy solve. If you're if you're running that that product on easy solve, you'll see that it illustrates all the way out to age 120. And so that's 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 our expectation. The way we design that easy solve is that we want you to make sure that you're funding that product appropriately enough to where it, it's going to last for the rest of their lives. And so that's why we have it extend all the way out to age 120 on that. Um, does come with the living benefit riders, the full suite, chronic, critical, and terminal illness on our IUL Express. Uh, but then also just worth mentioning, I do have two extremely competitive, fully underwritten IULs that are available to you guys. Um, not necessarily anything that we have to spend a lot of time on this call for, but if you are ever running into clients that have uh, a need for you know higher death benefit IUL, or they have so much money that it's it's forcing that death benefit above what a, you know our our, our IUL Express is a, a three hundred thousand dollar limit. Th this is a great way to be able to get them that that same low cost, low fee structure. Um, but just doing it on a fully underwritten product as opposed to the IUL Express. That's awesome. Uh, great name. We don't need to, to to do too much more on that, but there's there's one last kind of concept that I would like to go through with you guys, uh, and that is our introduction into the, the pre-approval, pre-qualification process on our electronic application. So this is applied to our IUL Express, Term Life Express, and Living Product Promise, and it gives you a pre-approval up front, the moment that you submit the, you know, just the initial identification information from the client and, and, and gives you a, a favorable or not favorable look. Um, so just going through, this is what you go through on the e-app uh, uh, before you get that that initial uh, uh, kind of a answer from, from Mutual of Omaha at this stage, where you get your, your information, the proposed insurance information. Uh, the plan information so that we know what the death benefit is and what we're looking for. And at that stage, as soon as you have that client complete that first signature, you're going to get something that looks like this. 
So they'll either have a favorable or not favorable look, uh, or in, in the event of Living Promise, you can get a graded, which is going to be uh, you know, orange or yellow, depending on uh, you know the, how, your, how your eyes are seeing that. But it's color coded. It helps you guys understand exactly what to expect moving forward. Um, if they say not favorable up front, please, 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 please do not submit that application. That's almost yeah. a guaranteed decline. Uh, you know, I think 99.8% of the, the applications that reviewed over, over the first 10,000 or so applications we went through on the pre-approval process um, were, were all uh, the assured declines, right? So it, it's very unlikely that if your client gets that not favorable on the initial review check, that they're going to be able to qualify for that product. Um, with that said, that you know some of the big questions I get on the pre-approval process is like, well, 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 what's wrong with them? Technically, we can't get rid of that information because we haven't got a formal application at that point. But that's very important because you're not putting through a formal application at that point. That means it doesn't count towards your placement. Um, so placement for us has been a a, a hot button item o- over the last you know probably 24 months as, as we've had a a bonus program that is relied upon with a certain placement number. And so this this entire pre-approval process in my mind has really kind of fixed the, the challenge to qualify for our bonus, right? So that, that 70% placement on our bonus uh, has not changed and will not change for 2025, but because virtually every electronic application you're submitting is going through this pre-qualification process, you're gonna be able to get rid of like all the pharmaceutical, all the medical data declines that you were getting before and you should see that placement increase well above 70%, right? So just, just keep that in mind. Or if you've, if you've abandoned Mutual of Omaha or the idea of getting that bonus, um, just know that this electronic application process should fix that. It's a 12-month rolling report that we run. And I think we've only had this in, in uh, set up for a couple of months now. Um, so pre-approval has only been around for a couple of months. But over time, you're going to see your placement go up. I've actually seen people increase their placement from 62% to 70% inside of a month. So it's very possible in order to do that. Um, there, there's a lot more people that are going to qualify for a bonus in, in, in 2025. It's, it's uh, going to be exciting. So if we have favorable, what is the likelihood that they go, that they would, what what would, is that basically approved without, we can't say they're approved? Is that 99.8% they're going to get approved or? I, I would say generally, yes. Yeah. So so right now we are, again, we're, the things that we're running in order to arrive at that, that pre-approval favorable is is uh, medical data information and pharmaceutical information. And so it's all, the, the entire data table is based on. Say, yes, I have cancer when they don't have anything on their record. They're probably going to get approved when they go to the health questions. Right, right, right. They, they, they probably will. What, what I will say is that. Yeah. The instances where I've seen where they haven't been approved is if there's something in the MIB that comes up that's not related to the pharmaceutical or medical data, if that makes sense. It's not, we're not running MIB up front. We're running we just okay, pharma. You're not running MIB. Medical, okay. Just, but isn't farm, is medical different than the farm report? They're two different entities? MIB is a different entity. So, Got it. So uh, if you want to do inside baseball for a minute, it's, I think it's worth understanding the difference. Yeah, right? it's, this is great stuff. Please teach. Uh, so, so pharmaceutical is like anytime your health insurer, like you go to the doctor and fill a prescription and they pay for the prescription, they submit that insurance information to certain certain companies out there that have a right to collect that data, right? So that's, um, you know, we use Milliman is the name of the that's company. Right. Milliman and Telescope, yes, right. yes, yes. So that's, so that's what they do. So they're getting all of their data from health insurance uh, carriers that are giving them that data. So in order to, to get anything in that box, it has to be through some sort of health insurance that you paid, you know, your, your co-pays, all that thing, any treatment that you got through there, that's where that information is going to come from. MIB is more or less, uh, I'll just simplify it here. So life insurance carriers that develop health information out of life insurance applications. So if, if you applied to me, but you check the, oh yeah, I've got cancer, even if that information isn't borne out in the IntelliScript Milliman data, I report that to MIB that says, hey, this person submitted a life insurance application. It admitted to a cancer history, and that's MIB. So MIB is people developing out of life insurance applications, and then IntelliScript is everything you do with your uh, your health insurance provider. Gotcha. That's huge. That's good to know. And so, um, which is why it's so crucial, guys, when you're talking to your clients, you're asking them these three questions. What are you currently taking? What have you, what have you taken? And what have you been prescribed? 
but chosen not to take because that still will go to your Milliman and Telescript if you were prescribed a drug the you know that that's on now the report that then the insurance carriers are then pegging against these uh, reports they're pulling so placement again we fixed it in my mind <laughs> and it's going to help you guys qualify for our bonus right so i've got a cash bonus we call it our four quarters club because because we we pay it out each quarter the awesome. requirements to qualify for it are $25,000 in annualized production in that quarter on any of those simplified issue products that we talked about, right? So IUL Express, Term Life Express, Final Expense, Children's Whole Life, Accidental Death, and Critical Advantage. Wow. I don't know of any other bonus program out there that has as many products available to it to help you meet the threshold in, in production for that bonus. So it's it's a bunch of different products that are available to it. 25,000 is the minimum to qualify for it, and there's there's no ceiling. So go after it. We, we, we've written some pretty big bonus checks over the last 24 months for folks that are you know, virtually it, uh, it, impossible to break that ceiling because there is no one, right? 70% um, awesome. placement, 70% persistency. You do need to have at least a four month persistency in order to qualify for that. So you do have to have at least you know basically one policy submitted and placed prior to the, the the qualification period. Otherwise you do you know, basically have to wait until the next quarter in order to be qualified for that. Does that all make sense? Yeah, it's awesome. 10% 10, 10 is a good bonus. I like that. Especially three quarters. You don't have to wait six months to get it like some other carriers. You don't have to wait six months. You can get it right away. I love it. Well, that's all I got. I wanted to make sure that you guys understood the concept behind fees and charges and why that's so important. Um, I talk about this a lot in, in some of the IUL trainings I, 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 I've seen where, you know, people are kind of getting wise to like, oh, this this carrier has a really impressive illustration and they can show higher distributions in, in year 20 than, than anybody else can. And like the, my my feeling behind that is that if it, uh, if you ever learn about kind of like the history of IUL and, and universal life insurance, you, you find out that illustrations were never meant to be used the way that they are being utilized today, right? Like illustrations from the Department of Insurance point of view was that they were supposed to be textbooks. They were supposed to be literally illustrating, hey, this is just supposed to help you understand how life insurance works. There's no expectation that this is going to be a, a, a good outlook or a reasonable way to speculate on, on what values based on indexes are going to do over time, right? Like that 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 was uh was never the intention of the way these things were set up but some some clever insurance carriers when when IUL started taking off noticed that agents would gravitate towards illustrations that had higher values built into those those uh, uh accumulations year after year right so so carriers got wise to that and and they maybe didn't necessarily improve the product or make the product better but they did figure out a way how to make the illustration better and so that's where I think over time some some of these carriers out there have have gotten a little out of whack, and you know they're they're building these hypotheticals on top of hypotheticals, which in in 15 years I just I don't have a high level of con confidence that these these bonuses and multipliers and different things that some of these carriers are doing are going to be borne out. And so there's a lot of people I think that in 15 years are going to be unhappy with the way that their their IUL uh, has performed over over that amount of time, and and you know. Being able to trust the carrier that, that designs the product and is behind the product, I think is, is just so important. So I think we've done a really good job of, of developing a very, again, straightforward, honest, you know, I, I don't have any bonuses or multipliers that are baked in this policy. Our expectation and our confidence level is, is much higher than, than I think anybody else can say about, the, about their IUL product. So understanding that the fees and charges, the, the only thing your clients can control is how much they're actually going to pay for the cost of insurance. Everything else beyond that is is just speculation. Yeah, traditional um, life insurance is kind of based in a fear-based sale of you know final expense. You don't want to leave this debt to your daughter Janine. You also mortgage protection. God forbid something happened uh, to you, Bob. What would what would Stephanie do with the house? You know, if you died yesterday, how would she pay it off? Well, you know, that's why we need a policy to protect the mortgage. Now we're focused on IULs. This is a this is a I want to say a greed based or a, or a goal based type sale because no one really plans for retirement. They, they, they have, you know, 3% match from the company they work with, hope they don't get fired and hope that it's enough money at the end and, and hope and hope and hope. And there's so much hope integrated inside of this, um, 
this 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 thought process but then so our job as agents is to educate the client on the value of the product on being able to take tax-free policy loans down in the future on the living benefits benefits associated with it on the benefits of the life insurance god forbid something did happen because a lump sum check to be able to potentially invest that money into an annuity or some sort of product that could pay that household a continual monthly or or annual income so that the wife or the or the husband or whoever the the, the caretaker is of the household or the children continue to live on the life that they designed on the way up right and that's what the beauty of our goals are is we get to talk about fun big picture type um type philosophies but yes having a hundred year plus a plus three time rated company backing your savings and living benefit and retirement vehicle, uh, it feels pretty gosh darn good. You know, it feels pretty good and it, it should make you proud as an agent, should make you proud as a consumer uh, out there to be able to purchase these products. But that's the beauty of what an IUL is. And so spend time educating your client, putting them in something that, that makes sense to them. Because as, as you said so so eloquently, illustrations in the essence are just illustrations. They're hypotheticals, right? It's it's completely well on, on year 27. I have I this company shows I've got 1.9 million, and you show I've got 1.85 million. And what you know, so that's five and in twenty, you know, 27 years, you know, I mean, it's just like this so much, you know, just thought, you know, how about we get down to what can you comfortably save for your family each and every month with the intent of and thought process of increasing that with either the increase in income or a decrease in expenses. How do we get as much money into that 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 indexed bucket as possible? Um, that's the beauty of IUL. So uh, Dylan, I appreciate the heck out of you, man. Thank you so much. Please everyone drop a M-O-O -O or a D-C in the chat below. Show Dylan Cummings some love. Show Moo some love. And um, appreciate the heck out of you. Any final, final words you got to send us off here, my man? Um, a thought I had at the beginning is, is you were singing the praises of that guaranteed advantage product. If, if there's anybody on this call that does not have a health license and because of Grady singing the praises of that product or, or, or has just been thinking about it and is hemming and hawing, go get that health license. I'm set, I'm, and we'll close with this, but that mutual of Omaha guaranteed advantage is one of the most incredible products we have to offer. I, I, I guarantee you, you will love that product because it will put you in a position where you will never leave a home or leave the phone without having an option for that client under 70 and above 18. Yeah. You know, for at least from that, that 18 to 70 year old age <laughs> and under 50, if they want return a premium, it's a phenomenal product, husband and wife, family, all on one policy. Everybody's protected, you know, double indemnity. If they, if something happens in a common carry, it's an incredible product, seven minute application and pays fast. So, you know, that's all, all things are important, but Dylan, thank you so much, brother. Appreciate you. Looking forward to seeing you soon. Thank and everybody you. go out there, make it a phenomenal day. Now we'll talk to you real soon. Bye for now.